Yeah, we on Boss Talk 101. Yeah, we gon' talk, we gon' have fun. We be on fire, we be lit lit. It's a unique hustle. Big, big, big. Check it, check it, check it. It's a unique hustle. It's your boy, ECO, and I'm here with the lovely, amazing, official Miss Jamaica. What's going on? Nothing, nothing. You know my day of all going. I want y'all to stop what you're doing right now. Go like, subscribe, follow us on all social media platforms. What I mean all, I mean all. I mean our Instagram, Facebook, TikTok, Snapchat, you name it, we're on it. But if you want to see all our visuals, you got to go ahead and get over to our YouTube channels. That's where you can see all our exclusive content and our regular content, too. But I know you don't want to be regular because regular means just, just subscribe. But if you want to be extraordinary, you got to go ahead and sign up for a membership. How you do so is under each and every video that we have, including this one right here in the description section, there's a link that says join our membership. Click that link and follow the instructions. And let me tell you, the things you can see and the things you can find out, y'all gonna be just entertained, okay? And informed. So thank you in advance for all the support and we love you. Man, hey man, listen, we got a very, very special guest in there today. She really don't need no introduction. <laughs> Really, she family, really. Hey, man, it, it was so wonderful to, when I first met this young lady, man, because I was like, man, I never, I, I, she was talked up to me before, mm -hmm. but I seen her. I went and started researching her after I met her, too. I was like, dang, I should have got that interview. I would regretted it. <laughs> the whole ride back from New Orleans, you know what I'm saying, man? Mm -hmm. 3D not T, man. You yeah. so dope, bro. Thank you. Man, Thank I, you. I'm going to be real with you. When I, when I first seen you, I was like, man. This girl can rap because he see G did already told me he's like she she mm -hmm. hard man. I mm -hmm. say you think she'll do an interview? I don't know man. I say, but when I went back and I seen you sitting on sway and all that, I'm like I messed up. <laughs> <laughs> Boss talk failed. Nah nah. <laughs> I mean I, be, I believe in, in perfect timing, so I'm glad to be here. I was able to watch the show. You know that was my first time meeting y'all yeah. then and having y'all come to the house and shout out the GD yeah. interviewing GD and everything. But um, but yeah, I'm here, so no Man. regrets. Now I know I already knew. You know me. That's motivation for me. I told you like. That's when I really, I grind hard. That's what I do. So mm -hmm. I'm like, I just got to get loud. There's a few more of them out there that I said, I just got to show them mm -hmm. this what to see them. Oh, yeah. And that's, that motivates me. It really don't even be the person. I, that's something I do for myself. Mm -hmm. And I'll talk and talk loud and over talk people and cut people off. And they think <laughs> it's really about them, but it's not. It's me trying to, I'm like Muhammad Ali. I'm trying to, I'm trying to prove to myself that I'm going to give you everything that I'm supposed to give you and it's going to come back right. You know gotcha. what I'm saying? Gotcha. So, love you, man. Love. Thank you for coming on the show. Of course. Of course. But Miss Jamaica for the light you up. It's <laughs> all good. <laughs> now, I like to learn about you as a person. So, mm -hmm. um, you were raised in New Orleans. What part? The Third Ward. Third, third ward. ward. Uptown. Yeah, uptown? I'm uptown. Okay. Yeah. So, raised with your siblings or your only child? Yeah, I'm the oldest of three. So, I have right. two younger brothers, the only girl. Um, my mama had me my two younger brothers mm -hmm. my daddy he doesn't have any kids so it was all all three of us you know just we real close me and my little brothers real close okay so was your daddy in the household with y'all growing up my daddy um passed when i was 10 years old mm. so so he was an active father up until his death mm -hmm. yeah he was in the household but um but yeah he passed when i was real young how did he pass suicide so Wow. Mm -hmm. Did you, I know you're a kid, so did you recognize anything leading up to that as a child? Um, Cause you mean old, like, I mean, well, smart. that's a mental health issue. Okay. So when I was really young. Um, because people hide, mental health is a thing that some people can hide very well. I was 10 years old, but I do have memories. And now that I'm older, I can understand I what he was going through. And also drugs played a part in it. Okay. You know what I mean? So the fact that both my mother and my father, they were big time drug dealers when I was okay. young. And um, by the time they had my little brothers, they started using their own supply. Mm. You know what I mean? So they went through, I can only imagine what it's like for your psyche. You know, he's ex-military. Like, a lot of things went Man. on. Um, if you, I have a project called Uptown Butterfly, which is my most vulnerable project yet. And I talked about a lot of that. Wow. You know, and yeah. how I was able to now understand it and see some of that shit really did affect me it affect the way my relationships it affect the way i carry myself as a woman all of that shit so my mental health you know what i mean right. which is very big to me now but when i was younger i didn't know that was just my daddy and he was gone yeah so you know what i mean so but as a child okay because you he built all that memories all the way up till 10 mm -hmm. and that happened how was that like how did it affect you as a 10-year-old? Do you Because I've seen kids right now who've lost 
parents or our father mm -hmm. and when you see them at a funeral you know they're playing and having fun whatever mm -hmm. but i know when it's like it don't register at that moment but when you go home and daddy's normally there putting you in the bed or whatever that's when you normally nah it when affected it me hit? it affected it hit me immediately, immediately because i was the only girl i was a daddy's girl okay. and i was the oldest and there was this he used to come and pick me up from school every wednesday he mm -hmm. used to come to my school so he was very active when it came to me in school and i remember it was it was actually around this time um in march she died in march um and i remember going to the funeral and my one my, one of my brothers was asleep i was just staring you know at the casket i know that there was now going to be a deficit because he did play a major role mm -hmm. you know what i mean wow. so so yeah, yeah, I I was affected. How old was your brothers at the time um, when that happened? I believe they were four and five. So they were too young. Mm, I wouldn't say they were too young, and that's why I referenced the project because um, I later found out a lot more about my father. You know what I mean? Things that I'm not necessarily proud of that I didn't know at the time. Mm -hmm. So I had this vision and this view of him because of the way he was in my life. Right. But my brothers and people in my family and his his sisters, his mama, you know, my mama, they all saw a completely different person. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So my perception of him, I think I was a little bit more sheltered. I was his baby. They didn't see the same person that I saw. Right. You know what I mean? So now you know that has affected me in certain ways. I was ways. about to say, does that make you? Did that make you angry when you hear all of that? Like, absolutely, that's not, it did. Absolutely. Right. Um, not really. Like, that's not my father. I had no choice but to and believe it because I know it was the truth. It tainted your yeah, vision of him. I feel I feel guilty sometimes. You mm -hmm. know what I mean? Because I was able to see a side of him that other people didn't get to see. You know, and I was like, damn, why? Why wasn't it me? Why was it them? You know what I mean? So, yeah, if you, uh, I know I'm alluding to a lot, but that's the, the project is very heavy. No, mm -hmm. I, I definitely, um, that's what it's all about. You know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? This is a form of therapy, like when you do put the stuff in the song, the, in the music, in the, do you do poetry as well? Um, I, I, that's how music started for me. Correct. That's yeah, that, that music, correct? music started for me as a, as a sense of, like me writing in my diary. Mm -hmm. I didn't trust nobody. You know what I mean? Because you got to understand, when I was real young, I had everything. They had me with the joints and the rope chain and all this type of shit when I was, the hair and bone chain right. when I was real young. So it was like a drastic switch for me. But I was too young to understand why that switch had happened so fast. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? So I didn't trust to tell anybody because the main people in my life were the ones that, were the ones that was changing it so drastically. Right. So I used to write in my diary, but I would do it in poetry form. And then I started making songs and shit. And I remember at one point being in class and I, I you know, I got good grades in school because I was doing anything to please the people around me thinking that that was going to change. Like if I brought straight A's home, maybe they're going to stop using drugs. You know what I'm saying? So I would do whatever I could. And I finished my work early, and I'm just writing. I'm writing a song. And um, my teacher saw what I was doing. She knew I wasn't, she thought I wasn't finished, so she took my book, you know. And she, when she read it, she was like, well, I want you to go and say this in, the, in front of the class as if it was something that I was going to be scared of. And that was the first time I remember performing in front of a class. And what I wrote about was... Um, you know what was going on in my household and I was very very young and the class was like very emotional so there were some people who didn't even didn't like know. we didn't even know each other like that in school but after that a lot of people it was it was like they Support, gravitated towards you. me Support. yeah yeah like damn telling me what was going on in their house and all of that shit the teacher apologized we had a different type of relationship because of it so music has always been something that kind of drew people to me because i'm you know i told you i don't even really like doing mm -hmm, interviews mm -hmm. i don't like speaking that much i'm a loner but it brings people closer yeah. to me when i share you when, know when, part I, of when I hear you talk it's like it's like what god showed you was that you're a leader 
And what you said helped a lot of those kids in that class. Mm-hmm. And that's and you didn't even know it that the magnitude of what was about to happen, and neither did that teacher. Absolutely because, not. And that's that's powerful mm-hmm. because that's what happens a lot of times. I think that's what when, what happened with Joseph when when his brothers did the wrong to him in the word, and it was mm-hmm. like what 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 you meant for evil for me, God will turn it to good. Yeah, right. you know, yeah, you meant it as an evil thing. But that's God a will change that. And yeah. make it a good thing, and it helps so many people because he ended up helping a whole impoverished land. But mm-hmm. that's the way it be. Like we be thinking we we the guy in light, but God is the guy in light for us. Yeah, and we just be talking. So she probably just like Steve Harvey said, you ain't gonna never be on TV. His teacher told him, "Boy, go sit down back there and turn this paper." And 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 and, and she, she, what she's saying is motivating the situation. Yeah, and igniting the flame in somebody that's not gonna go out. So that's when that happened to you. Like after those kids came to you, you just talked to them, didn't you? Yeah, I mean, I was always. Um I don't have a problem with sharing, but I have a problem with oversharing. Yeah. So, you know, I'm not the one that's going to initiate it, but I, I'm an open book. You know what I mean? So I understood my role very early on and music played a big part in that because I feel like I can have a better conversation through my through my music mm-hmm. than I can, verbally. you know, just verbally. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. So um, I knew what. I felt like I knew what my purpose was very, very early. Early. Mm-hmm. Wow. And and so after that incident, and it was a great experience, actually, but after that happened, how long was it before you did something else? Um, I mean, it never stopped. So you, it after never that, stopped. you just kept writing? Uh, I remember there was this show. I don't think I, I don't how know if I ever you said this that? before. That was... I don't know. I was in elementary school. So okay. I, yeah, that was That's real young. early. But because of that, and like I said, the teacher, she was impressed. She was impressed. So there was, um, y'all know Hold a Copy? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, so yeah. Hold a Copy, I believe is from New Orleans, okay. but I know that she had a TV show in New Orleans. Mm-hmm. And I think it was called like Hard Copy with Hold or some shit yeah. like that. And um, soon after she came to the school um, and she did some type of editorial or whatever on on the school the particular school and um my teacher had me rapping so that was the first time I was on tv on hold a copy show when it was going off you know I'm rapping when the credits so it never stopped it never, it never stopped, stopped. Wow. no I, and they saw your gift everybody saw your gift yeah that's yeah. good man I think like you being from New Orleans early on you end up signing the cash money Mm-mm, mm-mm. No, you, no, no. I've had, I've had a lot try of. To um, reach out to you. Yeah, a lot of interest. You're talented. I've, so. I've worked with, I've worked with Baby. I've worked with Wayne. I've worked with Juvenile. Um, who else? I mean, Cash Money from in early on. Yeah, yeah. Because from early on. you've been exposed because of all of that. Mm-hmm, but mm-hmm. Why, why did you not sign to him? Um, I think it's important. Independence is important. You know what I mean? And, and you knew and, that and, even back then. Yeah, and I'll tell you why. When you come from a place, I think a lot of the, even the trust issues, some of the toxicity that I learned prevented me from doing certain mm-hmm. things too. Because of the trust issues, because of the foresight, you know what I mean? And at that time, um, like one of my, baby flew me out to um, LA. Okay. I was in Beverly Hills at the Peninsula Hotel. Mm-hmm. You know, and it was a it was an incredible time. Me and him did some songs together. Um, I was out in uh, Miami at the Hit Factory, and I was working with Timberland at the time. And I saw Baby and um, and Slim, and they knew I was from New Orleans, so they was trying to get me from right? Timberland. So it was a lot of things, but I also understood. You know, I'm telling y'all some deep shit about the things that I've experienced. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? And a lot of times. This is the music business. Mm-hmm. That shit that I'm sharing is is a part of me, and that's a part of my message. But when you enter into certain realms, they don't give a fuck about none of that. So I didn't want my what I wanted to do, this thing that had really saved me, to become this thing that was just about money. I wanted to be able to put my shit out the way that I want to mm-hmm. put it out and not have to censor it or become this yeah. other person just because this is the metrics. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? And I do pretty well for myself as an independent artist. So my thing was just like maintain my integrity, maintain my voice, maintain my uniqueness. Don't let somebody just come in. And plus, 
the contracts was fucked up. <laughs> so I'm not saying that it I wasn't wouldn't sign. anything that was you were yeah. impressed with. Yeah, I'm not saying that I wouldn't sign because I definitely would, and I have. I, I actually signed to Universal okay. Records for for a brief period of time with Russell Simmons, but that was a very very unique deal. Okay. Russell Simmons gave me a licensing deal. So so I was able to still own exactly. all of my music. Yeah. And um and with that I gained a relationship with him and then I gained a relationship with Steve Rifkin, but they didn't take my music and mm-hmm. you know what I mean? They still gave me a hundred percent control over creativity, but they was able to place my music and place my name in rooms that I wasn't able to get in right. yet. So that was more important to me than to sign with somebody just for the sake of signing. But you, you, know what, you what you said is something dope, but uh, to even have the the understanding of a tra- contract say, being yeah. uh, 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 like it was shady or, or it didn't if it violated your publishing if it violated mm-hmm. things that you you really felt secure to but how did you understand how to even uh, you know see that that was what was going on because, because I was of, smart enough to get an attorney okay but a lot of people are not <laughs> and some people who get an attorney a lot of people are sometimes not sometimes those attorneys are crooked too I've yeah, heard stories a, about that too absolutely I, I, I just know I'm favored I got a lot of favor on me you know yeah. what I mean yeah. I'm not the most religious person at all like I'm from the streets and, I, and, and we didn't get into that but like there was a certain point of time where I kind of followed in the footsteps of my parents um, and started hustling that's what and I was in trouble. I was going to ask well, about we that. We go back into it because mm-hmm. I, I really, yeah. I, I, like I said, I jumped into that cash money yeah. thing because she spoke of it, but mm-hmm. I really do want to hear the backstory because it's yeah. so important to the people to hear, okay, this is 3D T phase one, phase two, mm-hmm. you know, and it's important because some little girl out there has got a dream, exactly. you know what I mean? Yeah. Some, some little dude out there is trying to figure it out mm-hmm. and the thing that you say amplifies what's in them to help them. That's what this podcast is about. Because yeah. the thing that I was wondering is, and I was going to go back to it, is since you lost your dad, you didn't have that male role model. Mm-hmm. A lot of people, a lot of females tend to turn to the streets or tend to turn to different men that are wrong in their life because they're looking for that fatherly love mm-hmm. and they put up with a lot of BS. You know what I mean? Some people end up in abusive relationships, whatever, and yeah. you know don't know how to, how to say no to it or know that they're worth more because they felt like, oh, he left me, he didn't love me type mm-hmm. of thing their father so to say so yeah. how did that affect you with relationships with trusting men with all of that growing up well i know some some women they can use that as um or it becomes one of the reasons that they become super promiscuous or mm-hmm. they have um it was the contrary for me okay because um i just didn't believe what niggas told me you know what I mean? Because, like I said, he I was a daddy's girl. So the fact that he was in my life and then one day he just gone. Now when this man telling me he going to be here forever, I don't believe this shit. So my thing was like, well, I got to get them before they get me. Okay. You know what I mean? Like, like you lying to me. One day you going to be gone too. You know what I'm saying? So let me make sure I get all that I can get out of. And I'm not talking about in a sense of like on some financial shit. But I treated relationships like it was and just for the moment right. i never looked at longevity Long, i never tried right. to plan for the future with somebody because i'm like this shit not gonna last i'm gonna always be you know it's gonna always end up just me you mm-hmm. know what i mean so mm-hmm. i think it affected me in that way wow mm-hmm. um so but then you said you turned to the streets how old were you when you were on the streets hustling and how did you get into that game well i my mama you know, after that, she had a time where she ended up going to jail, mm-hmm. you know, um, because her addiction got a little bit worse. Mm-hmm. So she, um, after that happened, then... Um, and how old were you at that time? Well, my mama went to jail. I think I was 12, mm-hmm. 12 or 13, mm-hmm. maybe. Um, and he had died when I was 10. Mm-hmm. So, you know, it started off by selling weed and shit like that. Mm-hmm. And then it gradually... You know, once I started to see as a young child, it clicks for me because I'm like, okay, the money is leaving the house. Mm -hmm. 
Mm. Where is the money going? Right. The money is going to drug dealers. So to bring it back, I must become one of those. You know wow. what I mean? You're so smart. You was like at a young age. At you a very young dang, age. That's how, so old she, how old was you? Like 13, 14. Yeah. You know she what I'm saying? So I'm selling process. weed in school. Yeah. yeah, I'm selling weed in school and all of that shit. And then by the time. And did you, you know, know any um, other people who were selling that you at that time? <laughs> yeah. Okay, just making sure because you yeah. know because you, you're figuring out that you know you have to become this person. But yeah, sometimes you know when you're around them, you be like, oh, okay. okay. No, absolutely. Yeah, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, keep going. Yeah. So, um, so yeah, that was just a thing for me. I just started hustling, mm -hmm. and and um, you know, I didn't got in trouble and all of this stuff, but um, That's cool. I, it never. Nah, with going to jail, like getting arrested. You did get a drip. They caught you. Yeah, I was. I mean, <laughs> they caught you. Yeah, Damn. It is, so I you were smart, like, but you, you it wasn't that. Yeah, uh -huh, <laughs> to get uh -huh. away no, from no, it. No, 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 you, no, no, you didn't no. catch a case or that. Mm -mm. Um, I was charged with, and I don't really talk about this because it was such a such a small, small time thing. in my right. life. Yeah. You know what I mean. And, and how old were you at this time now? Now this like twenties, early twenties okay. okay, and okay. shit. But um, but they yeah, by that you. time I met somebody, and then he taught me how to cook crack, and then yeah. you know I started yeah. you know with heroin and all mm -hmm. of that, like moving and shit like that. But in that sense. That n I never was that girl. Okay. You know what I mean? I never really want. I never saw that as something that I wanted to spend my life doing. Ooh. It just made sense. It was a means to an end. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So that that's that's that. <laughs> <laughs> you know what? Um, you know, this is a part of our history. You know, far as the crack culture. selling, the culture, mm -hmm. the heroin, like, and it's things like that. That and there's also trap set. If mm -hmm. you end up in a courtroom, you know that ain't for us. Mm -hmm. We look so weird in there. Mm -hmm. Ain't mm -hmm. nobody trying to be in there with them. They got the scales crooked. <laughs> and the scales ain't even balanced. We know it ain't going to be right. Yeah. And it just ain't for us, to yeah. be honest with you. But we try to go through it with y'all. And y'all knew who I'm talking about, but we not. That's not for us. Yeah. For me and you, no, yeah. we not. No, we not. That's a fact. No, nah, cause we be we be looking crazy in there. And they look organized. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> like they on the attack or something. You know what I'm saying? Like going to somebody's house, you don't know you. Do I sit on the plastic or you know what I'm saying? Do I yeah. stand here? I don't know. Yeah. This is y'all's spot. So no, I get it. But like you got to think about it though, man. You still to be who you are today. Mm -hmm. You blessed. You blessed. I know you said earlier, like you know, wasn't on the spiritual thing a lot, but at the end of the day, you know, everybody on levels. You know what I'm saying? Like mm -hmm. everybody got some sense of okay, I should be doing this or I, don't, I shouldn't be doing that. You know what I mean? Yeah. Well, not the spiritual. I'm very spiritual, okay. just religious. Reli I'm not. I, the we, most I'm not either, are you, who, yeah, I think I'm not everybody the says that. You know, even in the word that, that I read, it's only one place that it talks about religion, and it's in the book of James. It talks about that's taking care of the widows and orphans. Mm -hmm. But religion is something that's done repetitiously, and I know we take it to a state, but I just couldn't get into it myself. You yeah. know what I mean? Mm -hmm. we never been one to go join anything. Mm -hmm. I'm, not, I'm not a part of any organization. I'm out here like John the Baptist. I'm just in the wilderness out here. You know what I'm saying? Eating good. locusts and wild honey with the camel hide on my back. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I'm being real. Like, I, can't, I can't get down with all that structure you got going on, but when I get through with you, we trying to go somewhere. You know yeah. what I'm saying? That's how, yeah. I be, that's how I be looking at it. And, and it works. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? So, okay, now now, when when I look at you and I, I see how you maneuvered, you you become very lyrical. Like in a time where I see you sitting beside Kendrick Lamar, and I'm like, well, how does this even happen for a girl that's in New Orleans and a guy that's out of Compton? Mm -hmm. Like, how do you end up linking even these people? You know, linking with these people. Um, the the what you speaking about is an interview that I did. With yeah, Sway. with Sway. Yeah. That's why I'm telling you so, when I seen that, and you ate on that thing. So I'm like, you. damn, thank I'm you. like, how is she over here with these guys? I, I I really like I was telling Jamaica before, like when you do what you love, like people gonna respect you, and you'll find That's your real. tribe. You know what I mean? So I was just going there to do an interview, and okay. at the time it was a uh, South by Southwest, I believe. And there was a bunch of different artists that was supposed to be paired up because they had so many people to get interviewed at the time. And um, I think Pusha T was the uh, childish, um, Gambino. a bunch of childish, um, no, what's the other guy name with the three on his hat? Um, Chance the Rapper. Oh, oh yeah, yeah, Chance. So it was, it was a bunch of people that was there, right? And um, Kendrick wasn't there at the time, but I think I was going up next. And then one of the uh, 
producers saw Kendrick and saw me and was like, oh, we going to put them together. You know what I mean? So it was nothing planned. They didn't have it set up like that, but um, it just happened that way. You know and what I mean? And you was ready? Yeah, I was ready. But of you got to understand, see, you act like it's just people be ready. It don't work. Like, like a lot of people want to be in these positions, but a lot of them get to these low positions and they're not ready, you know? Mm -hmm. How did how did you knew if, if if I have to rap or if I'm a, if I'm called out on some you knew you was gonna drop a freestyle? Um, yeah, I don't know if you setting this up right now. No, 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 <laughs> I'm not. I'm, I'm just like, talking. Let me tell you something. One thing I love I'm about females talking. rappers, I love when female rappers are so hard, and mm -hmm. that's how I see when you be rapping, when uh, when I see your Instagram and stuff, mm -hmm. it's like you want to tear the mic off, like, mm -hmm. and I love it. Mm -hmm. So I'm yeah. like, how can we not ask for that right here, right no, now? No, I really yeah. not setting it up like that. I just want to know, like, how she's, uh, how you, how do you prepare yourself to be put in a situation where you rap in front of elite people and you kill the game? You know what I'm saying? Everybody can't do that. Well, a lot of people choke. We don't have them on here. They choke. Yeah. Who do you? Who? Who's your dream interview? <sighs> My dream interview. Mm -hmm. Who would I like to interview? I probably already done them, but I'm being real because I'm just. I, I don't never. I don't know, bro. Birdman. Birdman would okay, be a guy that Birdman. I would love to love so, it, but I kill so it. If you thing. saw yeah, so what? if you saw Birdman, you're gonna be prepared because oh, yeah. your, so that's why. You know, that's your field of expertise. This is my field of expertise. Mm -hmm. So you ain't gotta get ready because this my this where I roam now. If you would have asked me, how did you go in there and interview such and such, Kendrick sit next to Kendrick Lamar and interview him, that ain't my realm. That ain't my scope. You know, yeah, but this yeah. is what I do. I rap, so you know, I was yeah. ready. You was very ready. Of course. I loved it because, see, I'm in the South, so I, I look at stuff from a different spectrum as everybody mm -hmm. else. And I said Birdman because I already interviewed Bun B. Really, mm -hmm. that's my boy. Like, that's what, I didn't want to interview him because I knew, like, if you mess up my fandom, nigga, I'm going to be mad as hell. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> so I, I, it's more important than the interview. You yeah, know what I mean? Yeah, because we could have asked him a long time yeah, ago. Like, and we, he she like, asked him. Yeah, I would never he ask was him. Like, he was like, no, not yet. Nah, I'm not I won't ready do that for it. Yet, cause gonna want mess our it platform up. to be a certain way before yeah. we get him on the show. Yeah, yeah because I know I'm a fan. Way I'm in the streets with it. Like, I'm... I'm riding to a pocket full of stones, selling a pocket full of stone type nigga. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> yeah. So don't mess this up for me. Like this, is what I did. Our history depends on this. Mm -hmm. You know? What I'm yeah, yeah, <laughs> so, yeah. But, but I get it. So I was ready. You know, I knew it. And I pray. Once I pray, it's up. So whoever's sitting in that seat, it's all about making sure that so I you bring feel it. Me. Oh, yeah. So I you feel got me. it. I you feel you. you. Like, so, okay. You think about it. Like, when, when am I offset? Do you feel like like in the south where you come from? Did that hold you back or did that push you forward? Um, it, in, in the very beginning, I used to think that it it would hold me back, and I I felt like that was a thing that held me back. But to be honest, I changed my mindset when it come to shit like that. Nothing can hold me back. It's either timing, you know what I'm saying? It's either the wrong time. It's not for me, you know what I mean? Or the way that this can happen in this way, maybe I ain't work hard enough to get that. So I'm all about taking accountability first. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? So I can blame it on like being a female from the South. I can say all of that shit, but really you told me something about, you know, getting an interview with me. You was like, maybe I got to get loud enough for her to see me and want right. to do the interview. So I like that because yeah. You took accountability and said, I'm going to go back and do my work. You didn't say, oh, man, well, she's stuck up or whatever. Because it's easy to blame shit on somebody else. I always take accountability. I'm not, I love the fact that I'm from New Orleans. That shit stand out. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. I love the fact, I'm a female. You know what I mean? And I'm in this place. They ask me, how do I feel in a male-dominated industry? Before, I used to feel like, oh, well, you know, it's a bunch of men and they don't do this. No, because I know I'm prepared, so I'm going to get up there and I'm going to do my thing regardless, so I'm going to stand out. See, so I, I always yeah. take accountability. Yeah. I would never think, um, especially when you're in the field and you know you're you're very good at what you do, mm -hmm. I would never ever think of it as being intimidated because it's a man there and he's good. I would only be feel a certain way when I know that I'm hard and this other person hard, but y'all are not giving me the chance to, to elevate my career, mm -hmm. but you're giving all these other people, that's the time I when I fuck. feel I don't like, give a fuck. <laughs> I do not give a fuck. The reason, I mean, I've had a lot of, what I don't like 
is I've had a lot of men and a lot of people in position try to fuck. Mm-hmm. You know, I was so about to them ask you thinking about what that. they did, yeah, them thinking what they did holds me back a lot. You know, I've had men have me in a studio, you know, under the pretenses yeah. of working, you know, um, and we'll work together, but now they got access to me. You know what mm-hmm, I'm saying? Mm-hmm. And now they get to kind of study me and figure out a way that they can try to fuck. And that's that right there is upsetting to me. Right. But um, other than that, I'm like, I'm going to get it regardless. And this is another thing. The shit that some of the, the women that you might say you know, may elevate or whatever. We don't want the same things. You know, the things that I want out of my career, I'm already getting. So I can maximize that and it can be bigger, but I really wanted to get my message out and I really wanted to be able to make money, travel, and be happy. I'm not asking to be on a cover on a of mega. whatever. Yeah, I'm, I love the fact that I can... I pulled up here by myself. That's real. You know what I'm saying? That's real. I love the fact that I can go hop out at the gas station, yeah, do what real. I want to. I, I still need that sense of peace because that's what I started rapping for. I rap to get this shit from the inside to the outside. Yeah. So I'm still getting that. And whenever that shit stops, then I'm stopping. You know what I mean? And I see a lot of people stop because of that. Mm-hmm. Let, let me ask you this. How did you figure it out because you're an entrepreneur i've seen I, we see you you know and we see you in your element of business when we met you mm-hmm. it, it, a lot of people know you for your lyrics mm-hmm. but you're a businesswoman that entrepreneur. knows how to, you, you're an entrepreneur you know how to maneuver like how did you transfer that way of thinking like i can relate you know what i mean like how'd you take it from being one that was selling stuff that was illegal to make it something that now is motivating entrepreneurship and legal and legal Drugs sell themselves, right? Um, the challenge is, can you do that with something else? And I love a challenge. You know what I mean? So for me, like I told you, that never was the thing for me. That never was something that defined me. I didn't define myself as a bitch from the street that's going to let like, no, that wasn't the thing. The thing was to be able to be successful. Now, the more legal I can do that, the better I feel about myself. Mm -hmm. You feel what I'm saying? So being able to like transition, being able to um, own real estate, being able to move and and make the lives of people around me better was always my goal. Mm. You know what I mean? So yeah, you gotta, if you don't have anybody to teach you, you gotta figure it out. Mm. I don't feel like I'm the best. I don't feel like I'm the, the, the most successful but I have created a lifestyle for myself that um, is phenomenal. You know what I mean? It's something that I know other women, other people aspire to have. So I'm very proud of what I was able to do. Mm, yeah. I love it, man. Like I said, seeing you work and seeing you who, as a person, just seeing your brand, I got to be up close and personal with it mm-hmm. as I got to know you. And I just really, really like what I see. I and I think it. other people can enjoy it and learn and leverage from it when it comes to the younger men or younger women, to be honest with you. Mm-hmm. So a lot of people don't know the impact that they give, mm-hmm. um, you know, just from doing an Instagram post. Mm-hmm. Most people look at it, some of them, man, that can be messy, that can be, but there's a lot of people looking at your life and they're motivated by what they see. Yeah. And I think that's hard. And I think we can't ignore that. We give the social media platforms a bad rap because mm-hmm. we see certain things but you choose to look at that like my wife tell me the more you look at something the more it pops up on your page mm-hmm. yeah you see yeah. what i'm saying so if i'm looking at things that are pushing and motivating me to understand how to become successful mm-hmm. then i'm going to grow and be successful right but if i'm looking at things that makes me more negativity more uh uh of a person who lusts after women, let's be real for a minute mm-hmm. here, then that's going to pop up. You mm-hmm. know what I mean? If I'm looking at things, engineers that are, or, or, or what you call it, DIY, do it DIY. yourself. DIY. Yeah. DIY. <laughs> if I'm looking at that like you do, because I look on your page, because mm-hmm. I got access to your page, uh-huh. and, and I'm like, damn, why these people keep popping up uh-huh. making stuff? Yeah. I can tell exactly what she's looking at. Yeah. She can tell exactly what I'm looking at. Mm-hmm. So we know it ain't nothing hid, because I'm like, damn, this is what she's looking at? If it, That's what's going to pop up. Mm-hmm. So, I mean, you ever notice? I, I forgot the name of this. It's like a, it's a, it's a thing. It's a, it's a, like a scientific thing. But if you go purchase a car, right, and you purchase a Jeep, right, you like Jeeps, 
As soon as you drive that off the lot, you're going to yeah. realize, yeah, you're you going to start, start seeing Jeeps. You're going to start seeing Jeeps everywhere. Yeah. So it ain't just about the algorithm and social media. Like, there's an algorithm in life. Come so on, man. Whatever you think about, whatever you really surround yourself with, whether it be negative or positive, that shit ain't just about, you know, yeah. seeing a car and it's not or seeing even somebody that. pop yeah. up. If you apply that same shit, if you apply those same That's rules, real. then you would change your mindset in the That's state so that crazy. you're in. You're going to stop thinking about negative shit. That's real. Because you ain't going to want to see that shit all day. That's real. You know what I mean? So I, I just apply it to that. You know I what agree. I mean? I like that because it's not like it's not out there. You know, Jeeps are everywhere all yeah. the time. It's just that you never really just took notice of Your it before. Your focus is now heightened on that thing. Exactly. You know what I mean? So so that's what it is. And you know, one thing I wanted to say about you, and I, I love this about you, is the fact that you're not a prissy girl. Mm -mm. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. You're not a person that, and it's not like you ain't got the money. You're not the type of person that is going to have all these people around you who are doing everything for you. Mm -hmm. And I love that because when I look on your social media and I follow you, I see you, 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 you're you doing everything for yourself. You're filming everything for yourself. You're creating your content for yourself. You're doing your building. As I, I mean, like I talked about that off camera and I love to see, you know, I didn't see you have a lot of men around you helping you do this or whatever. You are a female, but you are here taking up this wood, building this, creating that. And I'm like, because that reminded me of me. And mm -hmm, I'm like, because mm -hmm. I can ask you one, th one time, and if you take too long, yeah. <laughs> he would always fuss at me. Yeah. But we putting this stuff up and he doing something. And I, and I say to him, baby, can you help me do this? And he said, yeah, I'm coming. Mm. He take too long. He turn around. It's already done. Yeah. No, oh, yeah. And he, he fusses at me. He's like, but that's heavy. Why you did it? Yeah, I yeah. get pissed like, off. I don't like to wait on yeah. nobody. I, yeah. I'll do it myself. And so when I see you doing stuff, you know, I'm, I'm just like. Yeah, yeah. I love it. It kind of started because I brought I brought my first house, I think, in 2018. And then the year after that, like maybe about 10 months after that, I brought my second house, with 2019. And then right after that, y'all know it was um, mm -hmm. the pandemic. Mm -hmm. So I, my mama hadn't purchased a house. I didn't have many homeowners in my family. So now I'm locked inside 24 hours a day. And I'm just looking at certain things that I want to improve. So I'm like, fuck it. I'm going to teach myself how to do it. And what's crazy is I did a couple things and then I was doing these things, but I wasn't filming them. But then I'm like, I'm going I'm to I'm film this and post it. Right. Mm -hmm. So I did. I built a sauna um, in like the, the back of my house, um, the house that y'all came yeah, to. Yeah, yeah. And that got a million views wow. on YouTube. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? People look that stuff up. We watch that stuff all the time. Yeah. So then I did, um, I was changing the ceiling fans mm -hmm. and I was um, building tables wow. and all kind of stuff. And um, and people started to really gravitate towards that. I rebuilt uh, a lot of the things in the studio. I did my own booth and all of that stuff. So yeah, people kind of gravitated towards it, but it really came out of the lack Being of bored. help. It's not that I didn't, you know, I could have gotten the help, but it was it came out of that. And it helps that you find too, so they're gonna be watching. Cause <laughs> yeah, it's not like when you when you doing this stuff, you're not in no big baggy shirt or none yeah, of that yeah. stuff. You be in your sports bra and stuff. And I that's know people just how I, that. that's just how I dress. You know what I mean? Yeah. But um, but I, that helped. Uh, <laughs> help. What thing uh, do you like? Okay, when you first come up, you know. Who was somebody that inspired you for as the rap game? Like that you was like, they dope and and you know what I mean. Whether it be female or male, it doesn't matter. Um, Lauren Hill is one of my favorite Lauren artists Hill. of all. That's time. her again today. Yeah, she's yeah. hot on the press yeah. right now. Lauren Hill is one of my favorite. I mean, Lauren Hill is one of my favorites of all times. Um, I like Nas. I like. It's really hard to say because it's ever changing, okay. to be honest. I'm more inspired by the shit that I went through yeah. and where I grew up, you know, my experiences. That influenced my music more than mm. watching somebody because I, I understand they're human. Mm -hmm. And I understand there's a lot of different filters before what they make get to me. So I only get to see a fraction of them. Mm. But I get to see 100% of these streets. And the streets really inspired me to make what I make. You Do know? you what when you think of New Orleans though, I think of Soldier Slim and all these other people, mm -hmm. these big influences. Like how was how was it coming up and being from New Orleans and hearing the stories about Soldier Slim? Well, I grew up on Delachay Street in the third ward, uptown. So right around the block on the parkway 
is where the producer KLC, oh, his family, boy. yeah. So KLC, he KLC is niece. like, yeah, yeah. That's he called me his his goddaughter. Yeah. yeah. So he um he used to always be on that block, and so the Slim would come there, Master P would drive, cause yeah. the whole little yeah. family used to live on the, on the next block. So I was able to see in real time somebody who I'm seeing on TV. And then they right here wow. too. Mm-hmm. They right here. And then you know somebody like Soldier Slim, he was really moving around in the area. You know what I mean? So I was able to see these people. So that inspiration came from like, damn, you could really make it from here. Yeah. Because they still come around here. You know what I mean? So it was something that really inspired me in real time. When when you would see KLC and what did, did he say? It's anything that inspired you? Did he ever talk to you about anything? Um, KLC. What I would do was um i used to walk around that area and i would have my headphones in or i would be moving my hands like this Mm -hmm. hoping that you know somebody would tell him and it worked like his family said your girl rap because one of them stopped me and said would you rap or something i would go to the bus stop but i'm i'm like by myself so they knew that i was rapping one of them asked me to rap i did they family is huge, so then they started to tell KL, and then KL, when KL came around there, you know, they introduced me to him, so that's how I met him. Wow, mm-hmm. and, and and that's a dope thing, man, because he, he did a lot of music down there. It's, it's a bunch of people down there, bro. Like, mm-hmm. that's the whole game. Like, like the music down there, and the way it hit different down there. Yeah, you know what I mean? New Orleans like, is a special New Orleans place. is different. Like, when you look at, even, even when Cash Money first came up, you were young, and you seen that as well. Like, mm-hmm. what what did you think of their movement when it first took off? Um, I mean, it was it was impactful because, like I said, seeing anybody make it from New Orleans is going to impact you. Come on now. Even if you're not necessarily, you know, immediately affected by it or you're not a part of it, you still, there's not a lot of people that make it out in that way. And I know that's cliche. A lot of people yeah, say, say that. But it's real. Like, if you come to New Orleans, you know it's like a kind of like a time capsule. That's why people love New Orleans, because we preserve our history. We preserve our culture. We do a lot of the same shit and have been doing it for years. So when somebody makes it out and puts us on display, you know what I mean? That's very, that's you know, it makes a lot of sense no, for us. We, we inspire by it. Well, even, what? even. And, I, and I'll say this before I, I know you got something you mm-hmm. finesse, but even uh, to see D1, he was just on Breakfast Club the other day. He's mm-hmm. one of y'all natives. Yeah, honest. yeah. And he was so excited about that. But he did say he came on Boss Talk first. And mm-hmm. I, I loved it. He had me laughing on lives. He shouts us out all the time. But to see him to come, and even the way he comes, even though it's, a, it's from a positive standpoint, he's trying to figure out ways to, you know, it, it, to really get his message out there to the kids that he affects because mm-hmm. he's teaching school, I think that's so hard and I think it's dope because everybody can be touched in a certain way from a certain aspect. But to be from New Orleans and to see some of the things he talked about with me mm-hmm. and to see who he is now today, you know, doing the things he's doing is big. So yeah. how was it for you when you seen him being from New Orleans and being in the place he is? D1? Yeah. Oh, it's inspiring. Me and D1, me and D1 have done a lot of things together. Like, we just did Jazz Fest last year that's all, together. We worked right. together a lot. Yeah, yeah. So, D1 has always been someone that's very genuine, you know what I mean, when he's speaking about his, his mission. So, seeing him be able to spread that is something that's incredible to see. You wow. know what I mean? There's so many voices from New Orleans. Like, I work with PJ Moore and there's so like a vast so many, yeah. yeah there's yeah. a vast yeah. array of artists different type of artists mm-hmm. in New Orleans so anytime someone like him he's staying true to his message is beautiful to see beautiful mm-hmm. man how do you cope with um, mental health um, or depression because mm-hmm. you know we all go through different things um, because the devil comes at you in your mind all the time with negative yeah. thoughts as much as sometimes we don't say it it comes in your mind different ways and forms how do you get over that how do you surpass that I'm still learning every single day that's every real, single day real. I'm still learning so I don't think that I can sit here and say that there's one main thing what I've been doing a lot is like sticking to the things that I love, sticking to the positive shit. There was a, there was, I spoke about it on the album. There's a song produced by um, Bink. It's called The Sad Part. Bink produced a lot of shit for Jay-Z and Mm -hmm, uh, yeah, mm -hmm. so Rick Ross and stuff. And, um, and in that song, I speak about how certain things affected me 
And music had always been a mainstay for me. Being close to my grandmother, she was pouring into me. But when I lost her, you know, I lost that positive thing in my life. I stopped making music for a minute. You know what I mean? And mm-hmm. I replaced a lot of positive shit in my life with getting fucked up, drinking, mm-hmm. you know, sex, being around people who ain't really the best for me. Come you on. know what I'm saying? So and once it didn't I realized, help. it didn't help at all. So once I realized, like, wait, I subtracted these positive things out of my life or they were subtracted out mm. of my life. This has changed. So let me try to fix. You know, you evaluate. So I started to implement more of the things that really... Um, kept me on a on a positive in a pl- positive place. So I spend a lot of time by myself. I like to go walking sometimes. I was about to ask. That's you know why you saying? go to Stony. Yeah, yeah, me. yeah. I go I go walking sometimes. I make I make my music. You know what I mean. And I try to stay in touch with myself. I try to stay in tune with with me and my thoughts and don't let the negativity get to me. Come on now. Mm-hmm. But it's easier said than done, though. Yes. It ain't that. It ain't it's that. Practice easy. makes perfect. Mm-hmm. The more you practice a certain state of mind, mm-hmm. is the easier it, your walk gets. Mm-hmm. Wow! I also stopped drinking too, so that was what? like a major thing. Yeah, yeah. How I long ago? Um, it's about it's close to six months now. So how is it hard? Um, really, it's not. It's not. Um, like I have anxiety, so sometimes when I get in certain social settings, you know, and I, I don't want people to think that I'm like standoffish or something. Um, so. I used to drink to kind of loosen up and right. shit like that. But now it helps to not give a fuck what people think. <laughs> and so that that makes me not really want to drink that much. Wow. Okay, that's yeah. good. I, I want to ask you about uh, past tense with uh, Kelly Price. Okay. Like, how did you even link with her to, to make yeah. that happen? Um, Kelly Price... I worked with Kelly. I have a production company as well. Okay. So um, see what I mean, guys. Step your game up. She working. <laughs> she working. She working. I have a so, yeah. Yeah. A couple years ago, someone reached out to me because Kelly was performing at, at Essence Fest, and they wanted to have one of my camera guys come out. Nobody was available, and I was like, I'm not missing this shit. So I came out. I put one of my shirts on. <laughs> this is my business already legendary. Hey. So I put one of my already legendary shirts on. I put my hat on and I went and filmed it for and when I met her we like vibe really really well so one of the she didn't know you rapped at that time when she met you when when I came she knew like they was like what the fuck like why are you why are you (laughs) I'm like I'm about to get the job done you know what I mean so um so I I followed her around for her performance and then um we connected so I ended up she called me again when she got to Atlanta and she had she was Filming for um, Good Morning America. Okay. So she had to do this this uh, performance where they, you know, they cue to it or whatever. It was pre-recorded. So she wanted me to film that segment. So I ended up filming that segment for her. Then she has a video called um, Dance Party. I shot and edited that video for her. So I did a lot of production for her on my own. Mm. Um, with the help of OG Films, which is one of the guys that uh, filmed with me as well. But we shot those videos for her and we became closer. She gave, she gave me a lot of advice. She's a very powerful, smart, you know, um, positive earth. person, down to earth. Yeah, so um, naturally, we have some songs together that we did too. So we developed our relationship like that. And then I asked her to do that song and she, she did but the song. The crazy me. part about it is what you just said. You said... I went and done this, and they looked at me like, "You, what are you doing?" Like, because they already knew you was, uh, as an established artist. Mm-hmm. And, but to be able to be as humble as you just stated to go and do that, I'm a creator. I get it, but that's not something <laughs> a lot of people can't can't see that. Don't they're get not gonna, the high horse. They're not gonna come down off their little high horse right. like me or you or right. set up some cameras or do whatever. And people be like, "Y'all start I'm like, man, whatever." Nah, Cause we ain't built like that. I saw it as an opportunity, and I also saw that there was a need. You know what I mean? And I knew that I could do it. And when you speak about having a, you know, being on a high horse, I don't think I've ever experienced that. That's real. I, I've never experienced being on a high horse because I just like creating. And that's why when I told you before, when you speak about like other female rappers and artists and shit like that, the things that they desire out the game, I don't desire that. Mm-hmm. I desire to create. 
You know what I mean? So that was an opportunity for me. To, like, I'm sitting here and people know me as a rapper, but I just told you I filmed a whole segment for Good Morning America. Right. Hey, you know what I'm saying? I love it. So, so and then her, her music videos. So a lot of things, and this is someone that I watched growing up, and, you know, she is also a songwriter and wrote songs for so many different people. Mm -hmm, Whitney Houston, mm -hmm. uh, Biggie, Diddy, all of these oh, people. Oh, yeah, she worked. Yeah, so my ability to even make that connection, and she saw something in me even outside of the music you know she saw my talent with filming and stuff so yeah man i mean that's that, that's something to be proud of but also god uses people man to connect it's the energy and the vibration in the room you mm -hmm. gotta think about it everybody's mm -hmm. not gonna click with everybody yeah there's certain people come around i probably never will know but then there's some that once i meet them i'll never forget them yeah you know what i mean and yeah. i think that's the way it works with the connections and the relationships that you build with mm -hmm. certain individuals i know you've come across certain individuals where y'all didn't even talk anymore mm -hmm. and you just met them and it was just for that moment but mm -hmm. People like Kelly Price, you come in a room and it's something that just sticks. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And I think that's live too, man. Like, how big was it? Like on certain songs, like Freak Like Me, like like uh, um, doing that song. What was the process? Um, that was a song that I created. It was already done, and then I reached out to High Sizzle, who is yeah. one of the yeah, he's one of the greatest performers ever. Period. Not just saying it because he's from New Orleans. Not just saying <laughs> it, you know. But he. Uh, he came to the studio, got on a song. He he added, he added himself to the song. So um, it has the Adina Highway. That's all like right. Yeah, that's yeah, all yeah, right. yeah, yeah. So that's a we shooting that video. Um, but yeah, it was something that I created, and then I reached. When y'all shooting that video, you don't just run up on that and don't tell me. When is it? Is it going? It's already in the process. Why are you gonna come? I will pull up. We'll pull up. Okay. I'll yeah. let you know then. Yeah, let me I'll know. Let you know. Boss talk will pull up. Yeah. You know, because I need to come back. New, New Orleans has embraced us. Uh, yeah, we us. love that New Orleans. The, yeah. I think that was the second I time. I saw a Jamaican restaurant that popped up on my my social media the other day, and I said, oh, I got house? to. I think that's what it yes. is. I got to try it because it looks so good. It's amazing. I love, I love their food. Because I think the wife is from New Orleans and the husband from Jamaica the, mm -hmm. who own it. I'm like, okay. Yeah, that's an amazing that's spot all to go right. to. But I I'm definitely um, looking at the way, you know, like I said, New Orleans has embraced Boss Talk 101. Mm -hmm. That was our second time down there. Yeah. And and now they're asking us and to come back. And the people so good. I love they the love, people. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, for sure. Let's talk about nightmares, man, for, for a minute. I'm, I'm trying to get through these. I, I, I like the project part mm -hmm. so how was it doing that and what what was that about so between the last the last time that I dropped a, a record was probably like five or six years mm -hmm. prior to that project okay so a lot of these songs were songs that was developed over time mm. um and I recorded them I have my own studio like my I, I record at home and I send it out to get mixed that song that particular song is with a guy from here actually out here wow. in Atlanta named Fedaro yeah, and he did the track and then he did the hook on it and sent it to me and it kind of sat for a minute but not until I started to think about you know some of the things that I talk about on that song mm -hmm. um, I was like damn I know the perfect beat for it so I did that but most of my most of my recording sessions I record the songs myself Mm. You know what I mean? So normally I'm at home, I'm in a studio, I'm engineering my own shit, and then I send it off to somebody or they send the track to me before. That's the same thing, like the real music, uh, Lil Ronnie, Mother Elf, certain ones that's creative, mm -hmm. they do their own Shout videos. Out to Lil Ronnie, I love Lil, Lil Ronnie. Ronnie. Oh, Lil Ronnie, Mother Elf, he gonna come on Boss Talk and he gonna he have his projects and he knows what he wants and he's so particular about it, he won't let other people help him a lot of times. Mm -hmm. And that's what I hear in you, like, I'm a creative, I can do it myself right. and make yeah. it right. But it also just goes back to the fact that I'm kind of like, I, I I spend a lot of my time alone. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. So so that's one of the reasons why I wanted to have a studio in my house because I could wake up at two o'clock in the morning and go and record. Yeah, you know yeah, what that's I mean? hard. So so yeah, I wouldn't have to wait or kind of filter my my thoughts because I had these hours that I had to wait to go with the engineer. That's so right. I always get in there and I tweak it later. But yeah, I like my shit not to be filtered. I like wow. to be able to. 
get up whenever I had an inspiration and do it. Do it. And sometimes you don't want that unwanted attention when you go into the studio. Sometimes with people that are around that you don't really want them to mess up your mental. Yeah, you know, space. I well, there was there was a moment when I was working with Timberland and Missy, right? Mm -hmm. And I was kind of intimidated because they had so many people Come in on the now. studio yeah. at mm -hmm. the time. But no, no, listen, they had so many so many other artists and right. different writers and stuff like that and they would go to the club like some of the some of the people in a writing camp they mm -hmm. would go to the club and then be go back to the studio at like you know two three in the morning mm -hmm. and i'm a morning person so i wake up early i like to record early but i'm not gonna miss the opportunity so i would be up like around the clock and i'd be in the studio recording and a lot of people would just come peek in the session come standing there smoking and all that but i wasn't really used to that so one time um, Missy was sitting on a tour bus and um, or I was sitting on a tour bus and Missy came on a bus and um, she asked me how things was going, how I, you know, how I felt about being out there. And I just told her, I was like, you know, it's kind of different for me. I see when you go in the studio, you able to sit there and you engineer yourself because Missy would sit at the boards. She'll close the door. She'll be in there by herself. No closed session. And I was I felt like. I didn't reach that status enough for me to ask for that. Although that's how I did it at home, the mm -hmm. same way that mm -hmm. she did it. So when I told her that, she was like, no, you have to ask for what you need in order to make the best work. Because when people hear the outcome, they not going to know, oh, well, somebody that's was right. in my session right. distracting me, whatever, whatever. So she was like, you got to ask for what you want so you can make the best work that you can. And um, I, I, I felt what she said. I felt inspired by it. The next day when I was in the studio early in the morning, there was a drill, like somebody drilling on the door. Mm. And I'm like, what the fuck is going on? The handyman was changing the locks and putting an actual lock because you couldn't lock it from the inside. They put a lock on it. And I was like, what, what, what's going on? They say, oh, Missy, put that there for you. You know what I'm saying? Wow. So the fact, yeah. So that inspired me to and gave me more confidence. Like she really was investing in the fact and and, and telling dope. me, no, you gotta make sure you put you and your music first. You know what I mean? So yeah, that was like that a, gotta be live. I mean, how long dope. was you hanging out doing doing this with them? That was about a year and a half, maybe. Wow, yeah. So was I was live. in I was in Miami at um. Well, that happened at. Uh, Tim Studio, Thomas Crown in Virginia, but it was like a year and a half back. And Did forth. you keep in contact with her? Yeah, um, not because I ended up not signing with them. Mm. You know what I mean? But um, she's like sent messages and said encouraging things, but I didn't end up doing business with them. You yeah, know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. But that door open just for you to see that God has well opening a door so you can peek through it. That's mm. a fact. Yeah. That's a fact. <laughs> Let's so talk. I, I got a question about okay. her music. So. What is the overall message that you want people to know about your music? What What do you want people to get from your music overall? Well, a lot of times that message varies, but I make music for people who may not have that whole cheering section for them. You know what I'm saying? This is the soundtrack for the hustlers. This is the soundtrack for people who feel like, you know, I would like to have people support me, but even if they don't, I know I'm one on one. I know I'm going to, you know what I mean? And that's why I named this Already Legendary, my company Already Legendary, because I don't need the validation from others to tell me what I already know about like myself. That. So, you know, I, I have reality rap, you know what I mean? I talk my shit. I had the song Freak Like Me, you know, that's, uh -huh. you know what I mean? I have all of those, those different elements in my music, but the overall message is that even when you don't have people cheering for you, you got to be your your cheerleader. I you know agree, hundred percent, I mean? man. Yeah, like yeah. I say, you dope. You always been dope to me. Thank I, you. I want the projects to keep coming. Um, no cap. That's what the young folks be saying. <laughs> no cap, or they'll say yeah. something like standing on business. But at the end of the day, I think that's you represent culture and you represent our, our you know, successful black women, man. I mean, I beautiful that. black women. You know what I'm saying? And I think that's important for our young girls. You know, they mm -hmm. can see the twerking and they can see all the stuff, and it's fun. But to see somebody that's encouraging with entrepreneurship skills that understand how to brand themselves and be successful in today's times mm -hmm. is remarkable. 
remarkable, and I see that in you. So thank, thank you. you so much. No, you know what I'm course, saying? Of course, of course. That's real. Like I like said, I I mean, you know, you got just got to give credit where credit is due. I know, you know how we used to say it. You know, what yeah. I'm saying? you do that credit because you put that work in. You mm -hmm. know what I'm saying? Like so, is there any anybody up and coming? Who's the new uh, girls? The young girls that you you got the message from Missy, and you seen the inspirational moments from certain individuals. Who is that young girl that? That, that you've had the opportunity to say some encouraging things to? You know, that's a very good question because I can't name one. Mm. Oh, it's happening. No, but the reason why I say that is because I would love the opportunity to, to be hard. able to name one. Mm. You know, I would, I would hope that my message spread wide enough because I hear people all the time tell me, but I haven't worked closely with like a female artist that or, it, or a rapper. I haven't. Um, I just... Within the last, um, well, February, February, I became um, on the one of the board members on the um, Junior Board Association for the Universal Hip Hop Museum. Come on. This is a sixty-five million dollar development Ooh. in um, in the Bronx, New York. I sit on the board with Yo Yo. I sit on really? the board with Fat Joe. There's Nas on the board. Yeah. So um, there's a lot of there's a lot of artists. This project is a huge project, and I'm the only one from the South. Love it, man. You know what I mean? I'm the I'm the only um, independent artist from the South, young female on the board or whatever. So there's a lot of initiatives that we're working together to do, mm. um, charity and all of that. But yeah, that's something that I, I really want to put oh, my coming. focus on too. Uh, it's coming. And there's also, they just um, honored me in New Orleans with the proclamation really? from this year for my contribution to hip hop in New Orleans. So mm. there's a lot of things that I've done, but I don't sit back and say, this is, you know what I mean? But it's, it's good to be recognized, yeah. but I do want to hone in. But I can't say like there's a female rapper that I took under my wing or something because there's really not. Not yet, mm -hmm. not yet. Mm -hmm. But at the end of the day, there's so much more to you. And I hope I could just be an example by the way that I move. You I know what I mean? The same, already. The, same way that, the same way that Missy just saw that there was a, you know, I said something and she was like, all right, bam. I, I, I hope that I can continue to do that in that yeah, way. I but think. the encouragement right now is b encouraging people to have that courage to actually say something because people will think it and not say it, especially be intimidated by, oh, that's Missy. I'm not going to say that to her. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. So I love that. But I wanted to get into real quick because, you know, we're Good closing boy, out. Oh, yeah, yeah. But um, I know you started doing film. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So tell me about your movie. Because that's what she started okay. branching off into. And why did you choose to do that? <laughs> it's a very interesting story on why I chose to do it. Um, uh, 2018, when I say I purchased my house, I was going through a breakup. When oh. I went through that breakup, um, I got an email around the same time from the casting director for this show called, it was called Pussy Valley at the time. Mm -hmm. And um, they and said that the same Katori thing as Valley. Yes. Okay. So they 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 said um, a playwright named Katori Hall is a fan of my music and she wants me to audition for this show. Send the tape in. Um, at the time, I was going through a breakup. I'm moving. I'm looking for a house. All that, and I don't. I never. I never done acting before, so mm -hmm. I didn't really believe in myself as an actress. So they was like, you gotta. Um, pole dance you have to have a little knowledge of pole dancing that was something that kind of <laughs> i'm like mm. so it was something that didn't i hadn't heard of katori hall at the time you know so it was just some shit that i'm like okay i don't know what this is whatever it's just something that can't come coming right. across um maybe about six months later i heard that they the director for that show i think it was just online somewhere that her name was Corinne um, Stevens or something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah Evans, yeah. Evans, Karina Evans. Mm -hmm. And um, I was like, oh shit, I know her. She does a lot of videos and that's that show. But it still didn't cross my mind until, and then when it later became P Valley mm -hmm. and, and this phenomenon that it is now, then I started to think, I'm like, oh shit. So I told myself, you know, first of all, you got to believe in yourself. These people saw something in you that you ain't see your, seeing yourself right, at the time exactly. and you passed on that opportunity. So I said, I'm going to put myself out there more 
And um and as of recent, I became one of the cast members on a show called Wicked City, um that shot here in yes. Atlanta it's on the AMC network. Mm-hmm. Uh-huh, I've yeah, seen so it. that was my first time like getting into acting in that way. I've done some other films, but with this particular project, I have um I shot a movie. It's a thirty five minute film, short film, um and that acts. Uptown Butterfly X as the soundtrack for it. So wow. it's kind of like a coming of age story. And like I said, I have a production company. So I started, I was like, why you not film all my yourself. own shit? Right. I filmed 90% of my videos wow. on my own. So it was only naturally that I would venture off and start filming my own yeah. films. And that's yeah. just showing you what you, showing everybody what you can do and eventually branch off to filming other people's movies yeah. and so forth. So yeah. that's, that's Absolutely. perfect. Man, Absolutely. you dope, man. Like I said, I'm going to be, I can have this right you can buy it okay that's let's fine. let's let's do that man that's live. all i love man, <laughs> you can buy it you can buy it gonna, you can buy course, i'll do that you you i love the hustle man i'm a hustler it's 3 dnitcom you hear what i just said yeah, i got yeah. the hell this no i'm just saying that let, me, saying? let me let me let me <laughs> tell you let me tell you why and the reason why i say it is no disrespect but i'm saying that because as you see i have a physical copy in my mm-hmm. hand so i do something very different like you can stream my shit mm-hmm. and that's fine but i'm a artist to the T. I created this right here, which is called the Already Legendary Wristbands. This mm. is a USB. All of, I wear it on my wrist, but this has 32 gigs of music on this. So my whole catalog is on this, and I sell this on my website. Really? Yes, I sell these on my website. They don't sell right now for 75 but they sold for $100 on my website. So people could plug this directly into their cars. They can watch my videos. They can watch my documentary. They can watch that. the movie. All on, that. all on this. I wow. want that right there. That's okay. what I want right okay. there. All right. <laughs> I, I mean, I need that. Okay, all right. I so, ain't no game. so, so, so this right here is they a come color in different colors. Wrestling. Yeah, it come in different colors. <laughs> uh, I'm um, gonna ride to that all the way back. Know that. So, <laughs> so this right here you can get on 3dnit.com. But when I say you can buy it, it's because hold it up in the show because the camera. <laughs> when I say that so you can, can buy it, it, it's because oh, I got to um, have that right there. I got to have that one. Yeah, With streaming. Dope. With streaming, you know, they kind of like take away from the artist, and I really put my heart and soul no, into this music. No, you're exactly you know right. What I'm saying? You know so, who would love that? Al D. Oh, I love it, man. Al That's D. what I'm getting. I buy everything. Like, nah, I ain't letting y'all win. I, mean, yeah, I, I, I have listen, another one. In but here you gotta understand the, the whole game is this, man. What you saying is happening, and you doing it. Uh, that Al D. Three Hundred does yes. it. Uh, it's sir. It, Look, Kiki does it. Mm-hmm. Uh, listen, it's the rollout for me for in, independent artists. I'm loving it because y'all figuring out how to do it without yeah. being you know uh the, the the big brother is not not having to do it for you you yeah you figured it out that's the hustler mentality and, and you got to think about yeah. it there's a lot of people that even when me and little kiki was interviewing a few weeks ago and he was talking about the the this process of the cd yeah. and how the music uh, i think snoop has said that the streaming is not you know basically paying the way it should or whatever mm-hmm. but he up one and said look kiki was like no, but we we are we are brand ambassadors. We didn't know how they made them cassettes. We didn't know how they made right, those DVDs. Yeah. We just knew that we was getting a little bit off of them. It's the same thing with this. We don't know what they're doing, but it's creating something to where we can go out and leverage off of it. Yeah. And we got to make that happen within our brand independently now. And mm-hmm. I think that's dope that you're yeah. doing that. That's, Absolutely. I love it, bro. That, that, that's it right there. Thank you. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. <laughs> that's hard. People don't buy CDs hardly anymore. They don't. No. When they, and this right here, when you buy this from my website, you also get a digital download of the movie and the album. Wow. So it's like you buy it. But a lot of people, you know, they have a collection of my projects. Yeah, yeah. And this is just something souvenir. a lot of times, yeah, that people buy as a souvenir, souvenir. You know what I mean? But I still give you the whole Package. digital, right. yeah, yeah, everything. Same thing with Glasses awesome. Malone. Like, yeah. when he came, he, he brought the too. vinyl. He brought us the yeah, vinyl. He has yeah, yeah. Vinyl. And this, this, this has done really well. Initially, when I dropped this in November, they were um, $33 okay. on my website. And they did really, really well. I put them on sale right now because I'm getting some of the, the um, last album into. So I'm sell it as a combo okay. package on 3dnazi.com man so. thank you so much for coming on the show top three of artists course. of all time dead or alive any genre any genre, any genre um, Lauren Hill Nina Simone and um, yeah we gonna go with uh, Tupac hey man thank you so much for coming on the <laughs> that show was on the spot, how can people go. get a hold of you if they if they want to my reach website. out and book you my website okay. 3dnit.com that is that is my land 
you know Man. what I mean? Um, if if Instagram go down like it often does, or Facebook go down, 3 dnitcom Man, check it, man. Hey, man, listen, man. Make sure you get, look at this next clip, because 3D9T just went in, man. You don't want to miss this next clip, man. Know that. Man, it's been another great segment of Boss Talk 101, where the bosses talk. And we out.